Have you ever contemplated going vegan and told yourself, I'm too much of a dummy, I don't know how to cook, I don't want to learn how to cook? Well, look no further because I've been vegan for almost eight years and I still don't know how to cook, nor do I want to learn. And you can too. So, <laughs> this video is for you. For all the people who are lazy that are considering going vegan, just know that if I can do it, then you can definitely do it. And if you like my videos and you want to help support me, then you can always purchase one of my t-shirts that say, nobody knows that I'm vegan and let everybody you know know that nobody knows that you're vegan. Now, I will be the first to say that oatmeal is not exactly my most favoriteest breakfast. I'm never getting out of bed just thinking, oh boy, I get to eat oatmeal today. Um, but I do feel really good after I eat it. So I am eating this. I'm trying to be healthy and I'm going grocery shopping shortly. All right, I just got back from Wegmans and Aldi and I got three things of soy milk, some mushrooms, maple syrup, apples, I got gala apples. Uh, some peppers, I've never seen the peppers like this before at Aldi, so, so I got these because these are interesting. Um, and I got some soy burgers. These ones are vegan. If you see the ones uh, with, you know, where this is yellow, if you see the ones where there's blue right there, that's not vegan. It's got cheese in it. Um, then I got this uh, sauce is on 85 cents a jar. So I, I love this sauce. Uh, and then I just got these uh, kiwi at Wegmans. And I just got some uh, bean pasta, two black penne, two red lentil penne, uh, and some more of this tahini. Sometimes you can get this at Aldi, but I didn't find it there this time. I usually do my best to go to Aldi first because of the cheapest stuff. Because uh, anything you can get at Aldi is always going to be cheaper at Wegmans, but whatever I can't get at Aldi, then I'll get at Wegmans. And this, this stuff is uh, for Kara. Um, but this was $30 for this stuff at Aldi and $24 minus Kara's stuff. So it was probably like uh, $17 or something for the, the kiwi bean pasta and, and this. So uh, it was like 40, $47, I think, for that. All right, you just missed it, but my creatine just sunk to the bottom of that soy milk. You're just gonna have to trust me. It's in there, okay? Uh, this is good. This is just like an awkward meal. I had an awkward amount of beans, I had an awkward amount of seitan, an awkward amount of spaghetti sauce left over, and just one more tortilla. And I was like, I just gotta get rid of all of this all at once. So this is just black bean seitan, marinara sauce, and a tortilla. Never had this before, but sometimes you just gotta clean the fridge out. I was working on a thumbnail with Dylan for the Hercules Candy Channel, but now I'm going to try this original flavor jerky from a company called Moku. They just sent it to me. They didn't, they're not paying me to do this, so I'm going to be very honest. I can say whatever I want about this jerky. So here goes. It's good. The texture is very mushroomy, which I, I like mushrooms, so I, don't, I have no problem with this at all. Um, if you don't like mushrooms, because this is a mushroom-based jerky, you may not like this, but I do like mushrooms um, and it tastes good. So if you like mushrooms and jerky, try out Moku if you see in the store. I know that Andriana's family as a whole is not very well known for descriptions of foods, uh, but I will say that it has a good flavor. Um, it's salty, but it's not too salty. Um, it's just well-balanced flavors. Uh, I don't know what to say other than it's good. I don't know how Max describes foods all the time, but I it's just, it's good. Okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is the most amount of effort I've put into food all day today. <laughs> I basically just chopped up these potatoes, sprayed it with a little bit of spray oil, uh, threw some tahini on there, put it in the air fryer for about uh, 17 minutes, and then I just got this soy burger over here and I put a whole other pile of ketchup over here for not only the fries, but even more ketchup for the burger because I do like to eat my ketchup with a little bit of food. Uh, and while I eat this, I'm going to watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. I'm on season four and so far it is pretty, pretty, they pretty good. Yeah, I know, but then it's all changed. You have nothing to do with it. I may or may not have already eaten the other spicy jerky. Uh, so this is the third and last one that I got from Moku. Um, they're really pretty good. Um, I'm a fan. And like I said, I don't mind the mushroom kind of texture. Uh, the other one, the spicy one, I usually just have Frank's Red Hot. So I have, I feel like I have like a pretty normal pretty middle of the road palette as far as spicy goes. And it was actually kind of spicy. I didn't need to like go get any like water or anything, but like it's kind of spicy. But this um, Hawaiian teriyaki one is also really good. All of them, I recommend all of them. I don't know if I have a favorite. They're all pretty solid, but I think I'm just gonna have this up. I might make like a protein shake in a second, but I don't really have a real dinner tonight. Just some jerky protein shake, well I guess I guess burger and fries count as dinner. <laughs> Alright, we're making culinary history. We're gonna see if it's possible to make uh, said protein shake 
with one hand. I, well, I kind of cheated. I already got this stuff out. This is uh, actually chocolate PB2 powder, which I didn't even know was a thing until you know I ordered it off of Amazon.com. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Maybe check it out if you haven't. Um, all right, this is gonna be the hard part. I only have a little bit of this left, so I'm just dumping it all in. Is that? Looks like I got it all. All right. I don't know. Where's the lid? Where'd you guys put? Did you use it last? Oh. There it is. Don't fall. All right. Plug your ears. Wow. And we did it in just under a minute. If I can get the lid off. Hmm. Tastes very chocolatey. Yesterday I didn't show you guys exactly what was in my oatmeal, but I just have some blueberries buried underneath these oats, PB2 powder, flax seed, protein powder, and uh, way too much stevia sugar. It's like a mix that I have. Uh, it's like half sugar, half stevia. Um, but as I was pouring it, it just sort of fell out way faster than I expected because I usually have about a third of the amount that's in there. Uh, and then I'm just going to pour some of this soy milk on top. And I think on the side, I'm going to have some more soy milk with some creatine powder. This is a tofurkey sandwich. I have avocado on both sides of the bread, a little mustard on here, and some more mustard on the side because I, I like my condiments when I eat my food. Um, so I have some banana peppers on here. Pickles are probably good. Roasted red peppers, um, even just cucumber, I think would be great. Chow cheese would be good. Uh, I do have, well, I think th this is Kara's cheese. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll eat some hard food, she'll eat some of my food, but I'm trying to be healthy. So this stuff is really, really great to put on food. <laughs> on food, yeah, of course I'm food. <laughs> else you gonna eat it? Uh, on sandwiches specifically. Uh, and then I'm just gonna have this kiwi, gala apple, and I have uh, this beet juice because I'm going to go work out soon. You can probably tell from my headband that I'm about to make good on this threat to go work out. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to talk about two things that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. But I got comments on my YouTube channel quite a bit about both of these things. So the first one that I want to talk about is the fact that I just ate a meal with vegan cold cuts and I talk about vegan cheese. And I know that there are some non-vegans who are confused because they're like, well, you say don't eat meat and cheese and then you just had plant-based versions of meat and cheese. So why don't you just eat meat and cheese? Like why do you have to make meat and cheese out of plants? Like what's up with that? Uh, and the reason is just because I, along with every other vegan that I have ever met, has not gone vegan because they didn't like the taste of animal products. It's almost always because they didn't like the uh, the way that the animals were treated or they didn't like the way that the environment was being treated. But we still want to be able to eat ice cream. We still want to be able to have cold cut sandwiches. We still want to be able to eat something at Thanksgiving. I'm not just going to eat like a bowl of cereal at Thanksgiving. Uh, so that's a way around that. You can just have like your plant-based versions of cheese and cold cuts and chicken nuggets and ice cream, whatever you want. You can have all of those things. And I think that also makes it much more enticing for people who are maybe considering going vegan. Like, look, you grew up on all those things. You can still have them. And no animal had to be killed in order for you to consume it. So everybody wins. Um, so that, I hope that clears that question up if you are still having questions about that. Um, and the other thing, that again has nothing to do with that uh, is the fact that I have uh, very visible dark circles under my eyes um, and this is generally coming from very well-meaning people and I, I can tell the difference I'm pretty good at telling the difference if, between someone who seems genuinely worried about me and someone who's just making fun of me and don't worry about me because I have enough confidence to lend to all of you guys I have confidence basically coming out of my ears and my butt so don't worry about me okay um, but this is for the people who are worried about me um, I do get enough sleep I am not anemic. I don't have another autoimmune disease. Um, people try to diagnose me all the time. Um, but really, my I just got this genetic trait. I was blessed from my mom. Um, she, she, we, me and her, we both have uh, dark circles under our eyes. And it's just because she asked her doctor why she had such bad dark circles under her eyes. And I'm pretty sure this also applies to me. Um, but she said that he said uh, that the skin under her eyes is just very thin so you can see the blood vessels underneath. That's it. That's it. There's no condition or anything. Um, somebody, I had somebody make a YouTube video about me actually saying that uh, I had adrenal insufficiency or something. It's just like something that like I don't think that you could really get actually diagnosed. He was like using terms that I was like, I don't think you could 
actually get that as like an actual diagnosis from an actual doctor, not just like a, a YouTube armchair diagnoser. Um, so uh, there's a lot of theories that people will have in Law of My Way, but um, just know that I'm fine. I feel great. I have lots of energy. I don't need to take naps during the day. I usually get about seven to eight hours of sleep. Um, you know, every once in a while I'll get five to six, but I pretty much get seven to eight usually. And I feel great. And I've always had dark circles under my eyes before being vegan, during being vegan. And I will probably continue to have them for the rest of my life because that's just my face. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to go work out and uh, we'll uh, bring my camera and try to, I'm, I'm trying to go at around 3 p.m. There's not too many people, so I don't draw too much attention to myself. And it, it's just easier working out when you're feeling yourself and no one's around. So let's go do that. <laughs> Have you ever tried to go work out and then you think that you ate enough, but then because other things just keep happening, keep pushing back your workout, then you're like, okay, now I haven't eaten enough because I was supposed to have worked out like an hour ago. So uh, that's what happened to me. Uh, I went to Wegmans. I got this Vega bar. I usually just get Cliff bars because they're about half the price of this bar. Um, so this, I think it's like only like 230. So still not crazy, but you know, if I get it for like a dollar, I'd rather do that. But, um, oh, this looks really good though. Ooh, this looks way better than a cliff bar, to be honest. Um, I did not expect that. No, I'm talking about a Vega bar. I've never had a Vega bar before. Um, so I uh, will see what it looks like on the inside. It says it has like 20 grams of protein instead of the normal nine on uh, cliff bars. Um, yeah, so this looks almost like a candy bar. Hmm. Mm. It tastes a lot better than a cliff bar, I will say that. Um, there's about twice as much protein. 290 calories instead of, I think the normal Cliff Bar is like maybe 260 or so. Um, this is the peanut butter, cho chocolate peanut butter flavor. It tastes kind of like a candy bar. So we'll see how I feel working out, but I would def definitely say this already tastes better than a Cliff Bar. It started like blizzarding right as I'm about to leave, but gotta brave the elements to go lift. Oh boy. Yeah, this is, it's coming down. <laughs> Last time I did a what I eat in a week video, I was doing Jeff Nipper's full body program. This time I'm doing his upper lower split and you can probably guess which day I'm doing right now. Um, but actually the cool thing is when you buy that program, you get um, full body split, you get upper lower split and you get kind of like a five day a week bro split. So I didn't actually have to pay for anything extra. If you guys are interested, I could definitely put a link in the description. Uh, I am not sponsored or paid by Jeff at all. So I gain nothing from this if you decide to check it out. Um, but I do highly recommend it. I have uh, gotten some great results from it. And I would recommend it for people who have a good grasp of squatting, deadlifting, and benching. If you don't, then I would definitely suggest, you know, maybe hiring a personal trainer or coach of some kind, or just like a friend who has been lifting for a long time and really knows what they're doing. But this day was pretty front loaded with all the hard exercises. Like first I started with squats and then I did Romanian deadlift and then I did hip thrust. And after that, it was pretty much all just like machine stuff. Like it was like leg extension, hamstring curl, calf raises, stuff like that, easy stuff. But I didn't record my entire workout because I didn't really think you guys cared about seeing me doing leg extensions or hamstring curls. But if you do like this video, and you want to support what I do, and you also want to let everybody know that nobody knows that you're vegan, then consider checking out my Teespring store where I sell these shirts. Everybody wins. I am definitely going to be having a two-part dinner tonight. So this is the number number one, probably like one and a half spoonfuls. Spoonfuls. Yeah, these are spoons. Uh, handfuls of spinach. If you put too much, it just starts to taste weird. So I try not to put too much in. I'm going to put in, usually three bananas is kind of like the sweet spot that I like for this type of post-workout smoothie. And I really do like the texture of like two fresh bananas and one frozen banana. Although I would really only recommend this if you have one of these bad boys, a tamper, because you're going to have to smush everything down as you're making this. Uh, and I also definitely recommend pouring in the liquid first because it just seems like uh, when you pour in the powders afterwards, they're less likely to just stick to the side, if that makes any sense. And also this is, I really like when I have like the bigger PB2 things because it's just easier to get everything into one of these scoop risers when you have like the really wide mouth. So that's one scoop of PB2 powder and the only protein powder I have left. It's not my favorite one. This is the one that I use for my um, oatmeal in the morning because I think it goes well with oats. Um, not my favorite for smoothies though, but this is the cinnamon banana protein powder by Vivo Life. 
Uh, I really like the salted caramel, it's definitely my favorite. The chocolate is also very good. Uh, but that's about it. Sometimes I'll throw in some flax, but I think it's pretty good as is. And I'm gonna need a lid on here. <laughs> And then you blend. What a concept. I find too that the chunks tend to go away if you blend and then turn it off and then blend in because I feel like the chunks of banana, like the frozen chunks, that's the really the part that will give you chunks of the frozen banana, will kind of sink to the bottom and then get a lot closer to the blade. That's my theory anyway, but that's what I found uh, is if you like turn it off and then turn it back on again multiple times. <laughs> Another trick that I do uh, is when I'm using the tamper, I will go around in the circle this way, and then I'll go around in the circle the other way. Again, these are not scientifically backed, just from my experience in smoothie making. All right, I think we got ourselves a smoothie. Hmm, it tastes almost a little bit like Captain Crunch, this uh, cinnamon banana. I think it was with the with the PB2 powder, that's probably why it tastes a little bit like Captain Crunch. This is just the PB2, it's not the PB2 in chocolate. I actually have both, <laughs> but um, yeah, this is pretty good. But like I said, dinner number one, I'm gonna take a shower and then I will have dinner number two. Taking a shower will kind of buy me time to figure out what I'd like to have for dinner. <laughs> I got the idea for this dinner, which is basically just tofu scramble plus some just egg. I never really thought about doing that, uh, but I got it from an Instagrammer named The Gains. So I'm going to try this out and let you know how it is. This is my first time trying it, uh, and I have not cooked with just egg in probably like two years. So I didn't know exactly what I was doing, but I think it turned out okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, the black salt that I used was, it came in like really, really big chunks and I had to food process it. It's not nearly as fine as like when you get it in the store and it's like super, super fine. So I'm kind of getting some really big granules. Uh, but other than that, um, it's pretty well done. Although I would say I probably should have added the tofurkey sausage a little bit sooner just because it doesn't taste as fully cooked as everything else. Um, but the mushrooms, the peppers, the onions, um, the just egg, the tofu, everything else tastes really great. And if you notice, I added a lot of nutritional yeast and a lot of garlic um, because tofu has zero flavor. So you have to flavor tofu a lot. So in my opinion, I think that anyone who says that they don't like tofu just hasn't had it prepared properly because tofu has zero flavor. So that's why you have to season it so much because it's just like a sponge because you can make tofu taste like whatever you want. 
So it's just like a shape shifter as far as food goes. So if say you don't like the taste of tofu, you just haven't had it flavored properly. Because again, you can make it taste like whatever you want. If you don't like that flavor, make it flavored like something else. Uh, and you can even change the texture too a lot. Like I have this uh, tofu very soft. You can also make it very crispy. It's just a very shape shifting type of food. So you can make it however you like. But anyway, I'm probably going to eat this. Probably gonna have the rest of the stuff in the pan. Might have some soy milk, might have some toast along with this. It's a very breakfasty kind of dinner, but this was um, pretty quick to make. And uh, let me know if you guys make it too. I'm very proud of this. This is just the normal oatmeal, but look at that. That's the, the protein powder scoop. It's just like a perfect cylinder. I'm really, I'm really proud of that for some reason. So I'm uh, just gonna pour the soy milk on here and have a little creatine. And then this is gonna be my lunch because I'm going into Hercules. We've got some Loma Linda, um, this seeds of change. It's just like stuff you can microwave real quick so I didn't have anything ready for lunch. It's got the apple, the kiwi. And right now I'm watching a video by Abba and Preach. If you have not checked out the channel, this is probably the best channel that I have discovered this whole schmorange mean. You know, I really spent a lot of time boiling this pasta. And then I also just had some marinara sauce, ravioli, and sausage. This is the 85 cent jars that I'm using. They're pretty great from Aldi. This is from Wegmans. Uh, these uh, have been around for a very long time. I know when the vegan zombie, who's been vegan for a quarter century, said that when he first went vegan, he was eating soy boy, soy boy ravioli. So they've been around a long time. They're very good. And this is the type of Italian sausage that I got. I finished off the last package. Usually I'll have one in the freezer. This one's actually, you can tell it's frozen. So now I'm just putting it in here. This is kind of like our, our meat substitute slash cheese drawer. Uh, and then speaking of cheese, I have some Parmesan cheese that I have left over from last time I made pasta. So yeah, this is the raviolis. Maybe I can cut one in half so you can kind of, you know, it's, it's hard. it's hard to do everything with one hand, but. This is kind of what it looks like on the inside, just white tofu with a little bit of seasoning. Uh, like I said, I got this uh, tofurky sausage here, some ravioli with a black bean pasta, Parmesan cheese, and this is lunch. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. Because I'm the same shady, you the real shady, and they all stem shady, just the same day. What the real same shady, please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. I just got back from the gym, not super hungry. Uh, had a decent workout. It wasn't as good as yesterday. Yesterday was a great workout. Today was, was pretty good. Uh, not every workout is gonna be a banger. Uh, but I'm having the exact same smoothie as I did yesterday with the three bananas, spinach, PB2 powder, protein powder. The only difference is I also added some creatine because I forgot to have that earlier today. Just forgot. Anyway, that's probably gonna be it for today. So I'll see you guys tomorrow where I will definitely not be having blueberry oatmeal. I would never. Okay, before you say anything, I know that the first step to overcoming any addiction is admitting that you have a problem, but I don't have a problem. I, I could quit eating this oatmeal any day. I could do it whenever I want. I just don't want to, but I could quit tomorrow, probably. We'll see. I just got done reviewing a Hercules video that Dylan edited, then I have to get to editing this video, and then I'm just doing laundry and just like cleaning a bunch of stuff throughout the house today. So, kind of busy day, even though I'm really not leaving the house. Um, but I think that's how we all are right now. But I'm just having some leftovers, because like I said, today is kind of busy, and I don't really, the last thing I really want to do is spend more time in the kitchen. I just want to get all my stuff done. And that was all I had the rest of the day, just more black bean pasta with raviolis. And I had one gala apple, but it was mostly just leftovers the rest of the day. Alert the media. I'm not having oatmeal for breakfast. Actually, I ran out of oats. So I'm having the same uh, just egg slash tofu scramble thing I had the other day with uh, tofurkey sausage, peppers, onions, mushrooms, and some tofu. And I only had a half a block of tofu last time, so I had the other half a block today. And if you, you know, I don't know why I'm getting up because I already used the tofu, so I can't show it to you. But um, what you're supposed to do if you don't use the whole block of tofu is submerge it in water. I like using this rather large, um, it's like kind of like a tall one so you can just fill it up with a bunch of water because you're supposed to soak your tofu. That's why if you've ever cut open a package of tofu and there's a bunch of water in it, 
Uh, it's just to keep it fresh. I don't know exactly why, uh, but I've tried to put it in the fridge before and not put it in water, and it does not end well. It ends up kind of like slimy. You'd think that putting it in water would make it slimy, but it, keeping it in water makes it fresh. It's weird, but this is the rest of the, the breakfast. I'll probably end up eating this because it's like almost noon and I haven't eaten yet. Usually if I don't eat by noon, I have to eat a lot. So uh, that is brunch, I guess? And I'm watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. And if you haven't watched Curb Your Enthusiasm, uh, don't watch it with your kids, uh, if you got kids. Uh, but it's got more celebrity cameos than I've ever sh seen in any episode or any show ever. It's just, it's nuts. Like, there's people in here that I've uh, seen in like a bunch of movies or a bunch of TV shows. Like, I'm watching an episode right now with Bobby Lee in it. Ted Danson is in here. Larry David is in here. Um, a couple of the cast from Seinfeld just like every episode there's like one more new celebrity it's just it's i don't know it's interesting so anyway i'm gonna watch more curb enthusiasm and eat more of this just egg tofu scramble type thing it's almost 4 30 and i have not eaten anything except for that just egg tofu scramble type thing so i'm going to eat one of these bananas and i always have a cliff bar this is my Cliff Bar stash. This is Kara's, the, my Cliff Bar stash is white chocolate macadamia nut because that is definitely my favorite, but I always have one in my bag as well just in case I didn't eat enough. So that's another good thing when you go to the gym, always bring some food because there's going to be some times when you think you ate enough before you go to the gym and then you just didn't. And I, I hate working out when I'm hungry. Like I just feel so much weaker. So don't do that. Be prepared. Something wrong. I can feel it. Just feeling I've got like something about to happen, but I don't know what. I mean, what I think, I mean, we're in trouble. Big trouble. If he has been answered to say, I'm not taking any chances. If you were just the doctor orders, I'm beginning to feel like a rap guy, rap guy. And my people in the front, the back guy, back guy. And we think the arms are long enough to slap box. I just got back from the gym, had a pretty solid workout, and now I'm having dinner. And you guessed it, more leftovers, because I am very much the type of person to just want to get rid of whatever's in my fridge, make a meal, not have to cook for like three days, make another meal, not have to cook for three days. That's basically my pattern. And I also have this smoothie. It's uh, pretty much the same banana smoothie I've been having recently, except for I only have one banana in it because I'm also having dinner. And I'm too lazy to make more of the Parmesan cheese, so I am just using nutritional yeast. So, as you can see, I really do love to spend a lot of time in the kitchen just slaving over the stove. <laughs> I have a very sad breakfast story to tell you guys. Still out of oats. I tried to make avocado toast. Both of my avocados were bad. And then I only had most of a banana because part of it was kind of rotten. <laughs> so, uh, this is what I've got now. Just some almond butter banana and pumpkin spice actually I couldn't find the cinnamon and I couldn't be bothered to look for more than like 15 seconds so this is breakfast actually still one of my favorite breakfasts so, so I say it's really sad but really it's not so bad I spent a lot of time making this food I even went through the trouble of making it look like I got it takeout which I totally did not I I would never I just put everything in things that look like takeout for the aesthetic because everything just looks better in plastic bag, you know? Uh, but no, for real, this is from uh, one of my favorite restaurants in Syracuse. If you're ever in Syracuse, I would definitely recommend checking out Vietnamese Noodle House. And this is my favorite soup, if I can get this off. They also have great Tupperware for when you're done, <laughs> if you do get takeout. Um, they have this with a tofu version, which I got. Uh, I think I actually usually like the chicken version better, but this is also very good. Uh, so this is just like a yellow curry soup. It's slightly spicy. Definitely curry and has like a slight coconutty-ness to it. Let's see if I can tilt it so you can see it. Uh, it's super, super good. They have like a whole vegan menu, which is awesome. And I got some noodles over here, which it's nice that they separate them so I can put them in later. It doesn't get all soggy. Uh, you can get extra noodles for not really that much too. And, um, oh, there we go. Just got this like one big chunk. Uh, and I also got this ham sandwich. You can get it with uh, tofu instead of ham if you wanted to, but I like the ham. And the reason that I like, uh, I, part of the reason I got soup is because of the sandwich. Oh, eh, it comes with cilantro. You know, I feel like I'm kind of like an in-between. Cilantro kind of tastes like soap, or I feel like it tasted more like soap. Um, and then it just sort of like grew on me and it tastes less, it tastes a little bit less like soap now. 
Um, and I can handle it in small doses. I don't like it in large doses, but um, I really do this, just this bread is just like very like, I don't know if you can, it's kind of hard, but it goes really well just dipping it in the soup. Maybe it's a weird combo, but I really like just dipping the sandwich in the soup. Mm. It's a little bit crunchy. <laughs> um, but for real, super, super good sandwich too. Um, you can see the, I don't know what kind of ham that is. I don't know if it's like tofurkey or what, but it's just like some cold cut slices. As you can see right there, I don't want to take apart this whole sandwich, but uh, super excited to eat this because I get takeout like once a month. Um, and especially since this whole schmean schmemic with a schmor and schmean, I probably get um, takeout like once every two months. So this is a very rare occasion. It was just one of those times where I was having a very first world problem where I had a bunch of food in the house, but nothing to eat. So I am very much going to enjoy this. Ooh, ooh, the potatoes in here are also super, super good. I don't know what kind of potatoes they are, but mm. just the texture is just so good. Um, so I'm super excited to eat this, if you couldn't notice. I'm finally eating a late dinner, and I'm finally finishing up the last of my black bean pasta. There's no more sausage in there, there's no more raviolis. Uh, and I ran out of Parmesan cheese, and I'm just too lazy to make any. Uh, <laughs> I really do like the black bean pasta with all the extra things, uh, but if it's just a black bean pasta and sauce, it's really not my favorite, but I also like that I just had to stick in the microwave and then I was done. So <laughs> I'm just gonna eat this, and I think I'm gonna watch John Wick 2. I've seen the first John Wick movie, and I really liked it, so I am excited to see John Wick number two. When it comes to decisions about what I'm going to eat, I usually weigh a couple things, and I may actually weigh some other things that I can't even think about at the moment, but the things that come to mind are uh, how much does something cost? What is the convenience? Like, is it a difficult thing to make? Is it very easy to make? Uh, how long will it take me to make? Like, am I starving now? Or am I anticipating that I'm gonna be hungry in like an hour or two? Um, how healthy is it? Uh, there's a bunch of things that I factor in. And uh, most recently, I have been factoring in, um, obviously cost. I always factor in cost because I don't like to spend a whole lot of money trying to save my money. <laughs> um, and I also factor in health because I am trying to be relatively healthy. Although I would say that my, my meal that I had for lunch today was probably not the healthiest because um, it was takeout. Takeout's never going to be as healthy as when you eat at home. Uh, otherwise, it's not a fun restaurant to go out to. Like, if I can just make a salad at home, I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, and at different times throughout my life, I've factored things more heavily than others. But at the moment, I'm factoring in um, health and convenience and also, uh, the cost of things is probably more so than taste at the moment. Although, I did have a really, really great lunch, um, and I am having this Alfonso mango sorbet, although there's not too many ingredients in here. There's, let's see, oh, this is a really, really short ingredients list. Mangoes, water, sugar, dextrose, lemon juice, and carob bean gum. And that's really it. I've had it before. It's very, very good. Uh, and it makes for a really great Tupperware. If you see this in the store near you, this one and the raspberry, I believe, are the only vegan ones. So be careful if you get to Lenti. And I should also mention that it's okay if you value other things more than I do. I'm not saying what I do is necessarily right or what you do is wrong. Um, but whatever you value is probably going to define if you decide you want to eat healthy, if you want to eat unhealthy, if you want to eat more expensively, if you want to take more time and make things that probably taste better than what I'm eating but take more time to make, or make more homemade instead of less convenience. It's all good. But yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm eating healthy. I'm trying to put on weight and put on muscle, so I'm okay with eating you know, some extra calories at the moment, and then when summer comes, like, I wanna look good for summer, so I'm gonna do probably like a little bit of a cut then. But at the moment, I'm just trying to pack on muscle, and I'm trying to just, like my numbers in the gym keep going up, and I'm really, really happy with how my uh, workouts have been going, so I'm super excited about that, and I'm just gonna continue uh, focusing on like healthy things that don't take a whole lot of time to make. Um, and now I'm just going to enjoy my mango sorbet. It's kinda like a gelato. It says dairy-free sorbetto. Um, either way, I'm going to eat this mango ice cream and I'm going to watch John Wick 2. If you guys have never checked out um, renting movies on YouTube, it's super, super convenient and you know that I love convenience. Um, so definitely recommend checking that out. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm having a late night peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I was wondering, uh, for the people who don't live in the U.S., is peanut butter and jelly just an American thing? Because I talked to someone one time who was British who was like, peanut butter and jelly? I have never thought of that. That sounds kind of gross, but it's like one of the most American sandwiches you can get. So I would genuinely like to know that answer to that question. Also, John Wick, John Wick 2 is pretty good. If you haven't seen John Wick 1, definitely recommend seeing that, but I also like John Wick 2.
I don't know what it is about Sunday mornings, but it kind of makes me feel like putting in more effort into my breakfast than I usually do. Maybe that's just me. I would love to know what you guys think. Maybe it's because like growing up, that was when my dad was most likely to make pancakes was like Sunday morning because most of the time he just had to go to work in the morning. So uh, yeah, I have not made a breakfast sandwich like this probably over a year. So I'm just gonna try it plain like this. I just got some avocado on here, uh, this uh, tempeh bacon, and I'm just going to see how it is. I got some ketchup, hot sauce, and a little bit of black salt in case it's not eggy enough. We'll see. We will see. Yeah, I haven't even had tempeh bacon in probably over a year. I like barely ever buy that or just egg. Haven't bought that in over a year. Okay, I'm just gonna eat it. I think the bacon could definitely be crispier. And I think it would definitely be better with cheese. Cheese would be really good. Um, I could definitely use some black salt. I'll probably dip this in a little ketchup. Try some, I'll probably try some hot sauce as well. But I would suggest maybe cooking it in the black salt. I didn't think about that until after the fact. And if you can melt cheese on top of it, oh, that would probably just bring it to the next level. But Kara's the only one who has cheese, and I don't want to keep eating her cheese. So um, I should just get my own. Yeah, eating it with a little bit of ketchup kind of just brings me back to when I was in high school and I had my first job at a place, it was a restaurant, it was a breakfast restaurant called Pardsies. My mom was a waitress, so that's why she just got me the job. I didn't even have to have a job interview. They're just like, oh, you're Terry's son? All right, you're hired. So I was washing dishes, and all the time I would just get something called the hole-in-one because it was a golf-themed breakfast restaurant that sometimes did fish dinners. It was kind of random, but um, I would get the hole-in-one all the time, which is basically just a breakfast sandwich, and I would eat it with ketchup on the side. They would get like some home fries. Ooh, home fries would be good right now. Um, but yeah, I'm just, it's nostalgic today. As per usual, I'm doing an Apple review. This one is called Sweet Tango. So, we're going to see how this is. I actually don't think I've ever had this kind of apple before. It really doesn't taste that much different than a honey crisp apple. That's how I'd, I would explain it is like a honey crisp apple. I think we got ourselves a late lunch. I guess you could call it like a liner. Um, but this is the inside of the egg rolls that I'm eating. And there's, I got some pot stickers over here. Got the inside of that. Cut them both open so you can see inside of them. Um, they're both really, really good. They're a Wegmans brand, if it'll focus, maybe. <laughs> it's just basically vegetables inside. Um, these pot stickers are super good, just plain. The egg rolls, I'm probably gonna have them some, with some sweet chili sauce. And this uh, protein drink is pretty similar to what I've been eating every time I eat um, a protein drink of some kind. It's just the PB2 powder, protein powder, soy milk. I'll usually, if I'm if I'm having it with a meal, I will usually just have it with something that's like kind of lower protein so that I can just kind of eat whatever I want, even if whatever I'm craving just doesn't have a whole lot of protein in it. And then I'm probably going to the gym. And if I'm feeling really ambitious, maybe I'll drink some beet juice. <laughs> I started that workout a couple hours later than I usually would, just got home, and I decided I'm not going to put a whole lot of effort, <laughs> just like every other meal that I've made this week, I'm not going to put a whole lot of effort into this. So I just microwaved this veggie burger, this is again one of the soy burgers from Aldi, and I also have some very, very, very sad news. For the first time, I think, ever since we've lived at this apartment, we ran out of ketchup. So I've got this barbecue sauce that I think I haven't touched in... It's like six months. It doesn't smell bad. I don't know if barbecue sauce really goes bad. <laughs> like maybe it's honey. Maybe it just lasts for years. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put some of this barbecue sauce in here because desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, some mustard. Probably going to finish off this uh, mango sorbet gelato ice cream type thing. And I only got like a little bit of soy milk left. So um, decent meal. Um, and I whipped it up in about 90 seconds because <laughs> I just microwaved this for 90 seconds. I put this in the toaster to unfreeze it because typically freeze my bread because I don't go through it super quick. And that's dinner. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget that you can check out these t-shirts at my Teespring store. And I hope that for any people who are still on the fence thinking that veganism is just too hard or that it just takes too much time and effort to be vegan, I hope that this video showed you otherwise that you don't need to be a master chef in the kitchen. You 
absolutely can. There's a ton of really great recipe videos out there that are much more complex than the things that I do, but also know that people like me exist. People who don't like to cook and are still vegan. We exist.